there are times with your transformer that you have to match your ratio of your transformer to your system. And this is where, where a tap changer comes in. Years ago, uh, the more common application of a tap changer was to, was to step somebody's voltage up. And of course, the more practical way is to use a voltage regulator or, or say compensate for a poor power factor by adding capacitor banks or whatever. Uh, nowadays, tap changers are more used to match your transformer to your system. We want to standardize. Uh, there's there's uh, some standardization that we can use here for for our tap changers. Uh, there again, to to be certain of your transformer taps and so on, you want to be sure and check the name and data plate. For our purposes here in uh, in our transformer connections, where we have taps. We want to standardize, and when we have taps that are numbers where, say, for example, one through five, then we want to standardize like this. Our tap number one would be our 100%, which would mean that we're using 100% of our windings or, or the rating of that transformer. The rating of the transformer would be at the 100%, and I'll, I'll go through and I'll show you. Uh, for number two tap, we would have two and a half percent less windings that we would use. We would actually be cutting out two and a half percent of our windings. So we would be using 97.5% of our windings. Three is 95%, two and a half percent down again. Four would be 92.5% or half. And five, if we added on tap number five, we would be using 90% of our windings. Now there again, to be certain of your taps, you wanna go through to your name and data plate and just see what, uh, what, what the taps are and how they're identified. Most of the taps by numbers uh, probably are your older transformers. It doesn't have to be, but it could be your older transformers, and it would be a minus 10% of your, of your windings. Uh, another one would be letters A through E, and you see more of these nowadays. And uh, this is a flexible transformer because you can use it on a lot of different systems. As long as your transformer rating for coil voltage and your system is a, the, there's a difference of plus and minus 10%, then you could match this transformer with your system. Uh, the taps there would be A, B, C, D, and E. The 100% of your windings or the rating that's on your name and data plate would be tap number C. With this transformer, we can go plus or minus 10%. So the tap B, we would have 105%. A, we would have 110% of our one or of our rating, and uh, D would be 95%, and E would be 90%. So from the 100% we can go plus or minus 10%. Now de to determine the tap that you should set your transformer on, you have to go by your system voltage and your transformer ratings. Let's say that I have a, a system voltage up here of, of 12,470. And we know that that would be a Y system, but the thing we were particularly interested in is that this is our system voltage, and that system voltage is always the phase-to-phase -phase value. If I have a transformer rating of 7620, 13200Y dash, and I'm only concerned about the high side. I'm going to finish this out here. So that's 13200Y dash. 
Now this is my, on the name and data plate. This is my 100% of my windings. We're going to uh, say that this particular transformer that I've got here has taps A through E available. In other words, I can change my ratio. Ratio will determine the, the taps that we would be on. Okay, now what we want to do, and for a lack of a better formula, we'll use this. You take what you've got for your system voltage and divide it what you want for your transformer. Now that sounds like a ridiculous formula, but it seems to be the easiest to remember. The value that you've got is your system voltage, and then remember that system voltage is always a phase-to-phase -phase value. What you want is the transformer itself. Now what we would use, this is a system voltage, and this is the value that more closely matches that system. And what it's saying is that on that system, I'm going to have to connect Y, which is phase to ground, but to determine which tap, so that I can match these two, to determine what tap, I'll take what I've got, which is 12,470, divide it by what I want for my transformer, which is 13,200, divide that on out, you would see you would come out then with 95%. So that the 12,470 is 95% of my 13,200. The 95% tap, if you will remember now, is is my D tap. I would place the transformer on my D tap, which would be removing nine or five percent of my windings. Now if I do that, then my high side will match up and give me what I want, or the rating of that low side of that transformer. Like I say, more application for this transformer is in the line of matching your transformer to your system because there's a lot of voltages that are close now. You figure 12,470. Or you could go lower yet. There are some systems that are 12,000. I've seen some uh, 12,000 delta system. Uh, so you could have a coil voltage of 12,000. There's, uh, there's other systems which, uh, which you might have, say, 12470. Uh, that's close. Uh, 13200, close again. Uh, 13800. So there's, there's a lot of uh, variations you see in your voltage. And if I had a transformer with tap, it's going to cost me a little more. But there's much more application for that transformer on my various systems. The days of uh, setting taps so that you can raise somebody's voltage is really uh, kind of a thing of the past. It, it makes much more sense to use an automatic voltage or a tap changer, you see, to, to regulate your voltage to keep it at the value you want than, than to, uh, to set somebody's voltage up. What's going to happen when his load drops off, then his voltage is going to be too high. So, so taps A through E, plus or minus 10%. There's going to be a lot of application for that.